Good Sunday evening, everybody. Live and direct just past the top of the hour. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick look at the forecast as we head into the rest of the day today. Well, what's left of it anyway, and into later on tonight. Been a dusty day across the Mid-South, and if you've had any views of the sky out there in the Mid-South area over the course of the afternoon and evening, you may have noticed that it went from decently blue to kind of a slate gray almost in the skies, and there's a very unique explanation for why that happen. We're going to be talking a little bit more about that in detail coming up here in just a little bit. Very hot weekend across the area. Temperatures once again back in the mid to upper 90s today. Not exactly record breaking, but at some point you got to admit hot is hot is hot. So it's not really seeing anything in the way of very good news for that in the course of the next several days. We'd love to be able to get some cooler conditions in here, but just not going to be happening anytime soon. If you can't stick around for our entire netcast here on weather overtime, that's okay. Okay, you can catch the entire forecast in the red bar at the bottom of your screen. You can also catch it here at wreg.com slash weather. Quick check of the 7 to 10 day forecast in the lower left hand corner of your screen down there. Questions about what you see on here or anything you'd like to contact me directly about, send it to me at austin.onic at wreg.com. And please make certain you give us a weather report from where you're located and we'll read those off online as you give us some ideas as to what's going on around your particular location. Give us some temperature information, wind speed, sky cover, whatever you've got. We'd love to see some amateur meteorology going on, so let us know what's happening in your neck of the woods, and we'll do the same thing for here with our live real-time WeatherNet 3 system coming up here in just a little bit. Like Paulette Morrow, 90 and clear in New Bern, Tennessee. Thank you very much for that one, and thanks to everybody else who's uh, joining us from around the Mid-South, waving hello, smiling, and everything else out there. Thank you very much. 88 degrees in Michigan. Another hot one from William Skage. Hope I'm saying that right. Muggy from Munford. Jennifer Lynn Ross. Thank you very much. You can see, so hot when I do my paper roots, I take my shoes off. That's pretty hot. Kenneth Sims. Thank you uh, very much for that one at this point in time. David Jones driving to where that go? Tunica. Notice the hazy skies. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Ashley McDonald Hollyfield. A lot of comments tonight. Thank you guys very much for doing that. Senatobia, hot as fire here. That's one good way of explaining it. As of right now, again, for the next several hours, we will be dropping the temperatures, kind of, anyway. We'll be trying to get into the mid to upper 70s by the time we hit about News Channel 3 daybreak tomorrow morning. Until then, we're just not looking at cooling off that much anytime soon across much of the area. So pretty stable conditions out there. Again, maybe into the mid to upper 70s across the Mid-South. And some parts of the area, if we're lucky, might make their way into the mid-70s, almost an Arctic blast at, as we go into early portions of July. So continuing to see that out there. Not seeing much in the way of thunderstorms for right now. Tomorrow, that could be a much different story. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Suzanne Hill Hess, 85 in Forest City. Hazy all day long. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Ashley McDonald, Hollyfield, I think the AC broke. Yeah, that uh, definitely feels that way out there. 87 degrees, feels like 97 banner or Scott Jarvis banner. Can't read that with my bifocals. Winds, 2 miles per hour. Thank you very much for that. Paragould, Arkansas, heat index of 94. Tammy McClish Bishop, thank you very much for that one. 88, heat index of 101 in Jackson, Tennessee. Pat Harwell and everyone else across the Mid-South looking pretty steamy out here. Again, 92 degrees in Henderson, Celia Horton Lair. Thank you very much for that one. And over 100 here, quit whining, Jennifer Marie. Well, that's one way of describing it. You can see again that haze out across much of the area for right now. Right at sunset, we've got a layer of clouds out there looking over the horizon back to the northwest. This is the Germantown City Hall camera. The water tower is just north of Germantown High School. You can just barely see Poplar Pike and Germantown Road, the railroad tracks over there. And usually you can see the Poplar and Mendenhall towers looking back to the northwest, but difficult to see that thanks to all this atmospheric dust coming at us from a quarter of a world away. 88 degrees in Germantown. Feels like 92, that humidity way up there at this point in time. Again, looking for some temperatures out there. Not going to be helping to get anything cool anytime soon with 51% humidity for right now. That's very uncomfortable back in the lower to mid-90s. Hazy with sunset, and there's some more of those clouds out there from those thunderstorms around Clarksdale in Mississippi. 
from Heidelberg Elementary on our Weatherbug page and from Squawk 1111 on the Weatherbug camera network in Olive Branch, Mississippi. Again, you can see some of that fading haze out there looking back towards sunset from Olive Branch. Thank you guys very much for that one. Trying to post more of these cameras out there for later on this evening as the sun goes down. We should be getting hopefully some spectacular sunset pictures here in the course of the next couple of hours. Now, what's left of some thunderstorms back into around portions of southeastern Arkansas? Let me back up just a little bit here. I want to go back to that radar site if we can. And again, showing, well, looks like we're going to be getting cranky here tonight. Pardon me on this one. Are you going to listen to me or not? There we go. Talking to inanimate objects again. Not a good sign. Okay, here we go. Looking at more showers left over into around just west of the News Channel 3 viewing area, right back around Lee and Phillips County in Arkansas. We also have some thunderstorms still going over portions of north central Arkansas. And these appear to be redeveloping back around Woodruff, Jackson, Independence counties, and moving slowly to the southeast. Now, whether or not these make their way to all the way around Jonesboro or Harrisburg in the News Channel 3 viewing area, a little difficult to say for right now. And also some decent thunderstorms north of us up towards St. Louis and down toward Poplar Bluff. Most of these are going to pass away from us, but signs of things to come. We could be looking at more thunderstorms out there that could be just like this into tomorrow. More on that coming up in just a little bit. Gwendolyn Pugh, 87 in Sledge, Mississippi. Thank you very much. Como, Mississippi, two and a half inches of rain. Kerry Morgan Graff, thank you very much for that report. Some pretty good thunderstorms out to uh, in and around the area for right now. 111 on Thursday and Friday. Jennifer Marie, okay, that doesn't sound like my forecast, but if you say so. 86, heat index of 97 in Maynard, Arkansas. Rebecca Bagwell, thank you very much for that one at this point in time. Uh, Rachel Patterson in anything severe before two possible. Nothing severe at this point. We'll take a look at that coming up in the forecast in just a little while, but thank you for asking on that one for right now. Uh, Marie Alice Kane, yes, try to drink enough to stay hydrated. And if you have pets out there, please make certain that they have enough fresh water every single day. They're wearing the fur coat. You're not. So bring them indoors for the air conditioning for a nice little treat to make certain they are able to ward off that heat and stay uh, very well hydrated and taken care of. Plus, if you see a pet who's being chained outside with no comfort, no care, no shelter appropriate for this weather out there, that could be considered animal, animal neglect. Contact your local law enforcement agency to see what can be done about reporting that to the proper people out there. Temperatures on the heat index scale, again, back in the triple digits. Even though the temperatures are starting to slightly cool off, we've got some temperatures out there pretty steamy. 106 is what it feels like at Crestview Middle School in Covington. Very high humidity levels out across portions of the area today. Through the evening tonight, News Channel 3 at 10, better chances of showers and thunderstorms back to our northwest, but it doesn't look like those are going to be doing much of anything in the way of sticking around for overnight. Through about midnight, we could see a rumble of thunder there, but through daybreak tomorrow, not that much going on. But as we go into tomorrow afternoon, that's where we start to see more chances of showers and thunderstorms reappearing across much of the area. And those could stick around through tomorrow afternoon and evening. And some of those might be on the stronger side. We'll have to watch those carefully as we go into tomorrow evening. Uh, the forecast again for right now, numerically speaking, as you watch these numbers unfold, you're really just not going to see a lot of changes coming up anytime soon. It is going to be very much on the steamy side out there over the course of the next couple of days. We're just not seeing anything in the way of relief showing up for anybody across much of the Mid-South. So Again, if you love the hot weather, we've got plenty of that out there. As we go into the rest of the seven-day forecast, again, temperatures through the next several days will just be back in the lower to mid-90s. That's not, again, too far above normal. It's definitely not record-breaking, but at some point in time, again, hot is hot is hot, and that's the way it's going to feel. Now, through the Independence Day holiday, taking a look at maybe a chance of a shower or a thunderstorm, afternoon and evening will be the best time frame. Now, whether or not that interferes with any human-made fireworks could postpone a few displays could maybe cancel a few displays depending on where those thunderstorms get going but the good news is as these thunderstorms develop during the hotter parts of the day once the sun goes down right before the fireworks kick off the good news is it looks like the chances of showers and thunderstorms will diminish and what we have of these 
what we really almost have of these anyway by that period of time should be dwindling and we should hopefully with all the displays of fireworks out there go off without a hitch now for the other things happening picnics parades celebrations neighborhoods stuff like that big around this area if that's been happening out across the mid-south if you have any plans for that and you see lightning or hear thunder time to wrap things up and get it back indoors again for safety's sake remember when thunder roars if you see lightning or hear thunder when thunder roars back indoors once again so so please use caution out there for that. Rest of the first full week of July 2018, not really much changing. Lower to mid-90s for highs, mid to upper 70s for lows, stray chances of showers and thunderstorms. And if that seems familiar, we'll just continue that into this next weekend. Now, by early in the second week of July, starting next Monday, we'll see, again, hot conditions and humid. Doesn't look like quite as much in the way of showers or thunderstorms, but once again, with the forecast numbers, the closer you get to something, the more carved in stone we can say things are, and the easier it is to say this is what will be happening. Getting this far out into the forecast is more of a suggestion. Again, keep it tuned to the weather experts for updates on this, but for right now, it looks like we'll be taking a downturn in the possibility of showers and thunderstorms. We'll know more as we get closer to next weekend, so keep it tuned here, again, for more information in tune around the area. Mava Fowler, hope I'm saying that correctly. Be safe this 4th. Yes, again, everybody, please, let's be careful out there. As Sergeant Phil used to say, Cheryl J. Hanks, 86, and humid in Oxford. Thank you very much. Uh, for that one, Carol Myers Ray, watch the animals and check on the elderly, please. Very good. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Gwendolyn Pugh, good suggestion as well. Uh, Marguerite Dixon, you can definitely feel the heat. It's intense, no question about that. Thank you very much uh, for everybody else checking in. And I just saw one, where did it go? 87 in Sledge, Mississippi, Gwendolyn Pugh. Uh, thank you very much for that one at this point. Again, through the next couple of days, it depends on which direction the atmosphere moves this dust out there. Now, the clouds are going to interfere with watching the sun going down beneath the horizon, but we may see some pretty spectacular colors up here as the light begins to reflect off the clouds and off that dust. So you may want to check outside to see some natural light fireworks going on from the sun as this dust moves on through portions of the area. Where is this stuff coming from? from almost half a world away, the way things will be, again, showing up for right now. Now, so far, according to the National Weather Service or Shelby County Health Department, there's been no mentions of any of this dust moving on through here, causing problems for anybody with lung ailments, asthma, emphysema, stuff like that. Indoors, again, might not be such a bad idea, just in case with all that particulates out there, that could cause problems for anybody who does have lung problems, so something to think about there. Africa over here, and this is, again, earth.nullschool.net with these great designs about following atmospheric and ocean currents out there. The dust right in around here moves its way across the Atlantic and up into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, yesterday, it was making its way into Texas, Northern Mexico, the Rio Grande Valley, it has shifted just a little bit, so now it is making its way back up the Mississippi Valley, and that takes it right over Memphis and the Mid-South area, and it's actually going as far north as Chicago tonight, all the way up to Lake Michigan. Not quite as intense as what we see here, but again, definitely noticeable if you look at all that dust out there, kind of that slate gray color instead of the straight blue color that we usually get on a nice, fine, high summer day out there. So something, again, to see out across the area for right now. Again, maybe a little gritty on your windshield. That, uh, again, could be something that settles around out there, depending on how thick this stuff is. A lot of this, again, if the pattern holds, we'll be seeing more of this coming on through. The other good thing is that this making its way over the Atlantic is doing a good job of shading the ocean surface, and that's keeping things not quite as active, and that means we're not going to see as much in the way of hurricanes starting off. Now, July not exactly the best time for anything in the way of major storms taking place. They can still happen, but right now it looks like even less possibility of that with, again, that dust out there. We'll see how long this lasts over the next several days, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for more. Scarlett Rivas, thank you very much for these storms from earlier this week around Senatobia, Mississippi. Nice little sunset-lit cloud and what looks to be kind of a dying anvil from a minor thunderstorm passing on through there. Fred Cotto, hope I'm saying that right, from Ole Miss. Nice shot of the moon rising earlier with a few clouds lit up from there. 
Very nice shots. Fred, Mr. Fred sent us a lot of some very nice pictures out that direction. Elena Smothers and Gulf Shores, I believe this was yesterday or Friday, as a pretty potent looking storm moved into the Gulf Shores area and even caused a couple of very minor land spout tornadoes out there, but nothing in the way of major damage being reported uh, into and around the area here. And then also from Vicki Chalk Metter, uh, Olive Branch, Mississippi, a little bit of wind damage from those storms early this week but fortunately nothing major taking place, so definitely good news on that. Got pictures? We'd love to feature them, but we can't show them. If you don't send them, you kind of see the problem I'm running into here. So if you have pictures, please send them along to me, again, anywhere on these social media pages, or you can email them to me, again, at austin.onic at wreg.com. We'll feature them on social media when we can and on News Channel 3 on the newscast if we have, again, enough time to do that on there as well. Rosalind Taylor Mason, ready for fall. I believe I saw earlier something like about 126 days, if I'm not mistaken, until autumn equinox actually begins, and something like 160 days until uh, Christmas. Somebody was posting that on Twitter earlier tonight, so uh, not entirely too long on there. Catherine Lacey Paget uh, thought it was dust from farming. Nope, this is an international export coming on through here. Now, again, a few clouds tonight might be a bit of a problem for seeing this, but if you take a look toward the eastern skies, and this should be decently easy to see because you'll be looking right beneath one of the brightest stars in the sky, again looking back toward the east-northeast, and you should be able to see again Vega in the constellation of Lyra the Harp right beneath that at almost exactly 10 o'clock tonight. We'll be seeing an iridium flare Satellite making its way in orbit. It's a communications network satellite, the Iridium system. Uh, it's going to be deorbited pretty soon, so we won't be seeing these satellites for too much longer. So this might be one of your last chances to see this in the near future. It'll fade in. It'll become very, very bright, almost again as bright as Vega, and then fade back out again all within about maybe 20 to 30 seconds. So you'll have to be looking in just the right place at just the right time. And again, right below Vega, that bright star in the east-northeast, that'll be your best bet to see that, and that'll be right about at just at 10 o'clock tonight. If you want to take a look out for that one, should be, again, some good viewing out there. Mostly clear, kind of hazy. Some clouds out there could be a bit of a problem, but also not seeing too much to worry about there. Catch my forecast throughout the rest of what's left of the weekend on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. And, of course, I'll be back on with Bob and Josh tomorrow morning on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio for Talk Back Live. If you want to hear a lot about local and all kinds of other stuff involving sports, the World Cup, Memphis Tigers, golf, everything else like that. They'll talk about it, and it starts at 8 o'clock Monday through Friday on AM 730. If you can't get them on air, get them online at talkbacklivenetwork.org for more information on that. We'll have a complete update of the forecast coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. I'll have that. Kristen Holloway will have all the day's news, and be sure to join our brand new sports anchor, Megan Rice, as she updates you on a very busy day on sports. And again, that'll be tonight on News Channel 3 at 10 o'clock. Thanks to everybody for checking in. Thank you very much for the compliments, the questions, the weather reports out across uh, much of the area for tonight. And thanks to everybody for the weather reports from around the area as well. Again, anything you'd like to see on here, please let me know, and I'll pass it along to our supervisors for approval and letting them know what you would like to see on here. Again, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onic. Stay tuned for much more with News Channel 3 on air and online into the first week of July.